Good Monday morning, everyone. And I'm sure you're saying it's not really a good morning because it's a Monday morning, but welcome back to the Monday Morning Mojo. I'm Amy Schrader with Remax Real Estate 10. And I just want to share with you for a few minutes this morning before you get started and jump into your Monday. Um, I know we're having some crazy weather around here. Um, you know, we're getting flooding and then we got snow and then yesterday was an absolutely beautiful day. So I hope you were able to get out and enjoy it. Um, and then we're looking at more flooding again this week. So just hang in there and remember that um, the sun will come out. So today I want to share with you nine different ways that buyers sabotage their home purchase. Okay. And you may be saying, well, if they're trying to buy a home, why would they sabotage it? A lot of times it's because they don't realize that that's what they're doing. Okay. The first thing is that some buyers have unrealistic expectations. All right. Um, and I find this more with, I guess, first time home buyers. Um, you know, they're used to living in mom and dad's $250,000, $300,000 house, and that's what they want for their first home. And that's not going to happen. You know what I'm saying? Like you're not going to buy a $300,000 house for $150,000. So you have to be realistic in your expectations when you go house hunting, like look online, look at realtor.com, see what homes in the price range that you can afford look like. Um, what kind of amenities do they have? What are standard features? Things like that. The second mistake that buyers make, is they hesitate. And you all have heard me preach for over a year that we are in a seller's market. We're in a seller's market. We're in a seller's market. And you know, it is hard to find inventory. So when you find that house that you like, the last thing you need to do is to sleep on it, wait, you know, I want to talk to my parents. I want my parents to come see it, whatever the case may be. If you hesitate, you will lose that house. Okay. And I try to coach my buyers when I go out with them and I tell them, you know, when you find the one, when you walk in and you know, this is home, we need to make that offer. Okay. I'm not one to do the high pressure sales and try to get people to make an offer, you know, the first day out. But at the same time, I don't want my buyers to lose out on a house because I didn't share with them the urgency that they needed to get an offer in pretty quickly. Okay. And as an agent, we know which houses are going to sell quickly. We can tell by the neighborhood, the price, what they have in it, the way they look. So when I tell you, Hey, if this is the one we need to get an offer, then we need to get an offer in. Okay. The third thing is that buyers compare everything to the one that got away. All right. In this type of market, invariably, you're going to have a buyer who loses out in a multiple offer situation. Happens to everybody. And that is their one that got away and nothing's ever going to live up to that house for them. And they just have to realize, you know, I lost it for whatever reason. It might've been because they hesitated to make that offer. Um, and you just kind of have to put it aside and move forward. You know, either you're going to buy a house and forget about that one, or maybe you just stop your house hunting for, for a period of time anyway. So the fourth thing that buyers do to sabotage a purchase is they nitpick. Um, and when I say that, it's like they're looking for every little thing that they can find wrong with the house instead of looking at the big picture of the house. Every house is going to have flaws. Even a new construction home, there's going to be some flaws. That's why you do a home inspection and have a punch list. Um, what you have to do is what are the things I can live with and what are the things that, no, that's just a total turnoff for me. Okay. Any house you look at is going to have a defect. It's going to have a flaw. There's going to be something wrong with it. Um, you know, what can you live with? What can you not? But don't nitpick every house to death or you'll end up never buying a home. Looking too much. Um, and I have run into this with a couple of clients where they just keep thinking that the next house that goes on the market is going to be better, you know, and they want to just keep looking and keep looking and keep looking and then they're going to miss out altogether because interest rates are not going to stay low forever. And then that's going to affect how much house they can buy. 
So, you know, set yourself some kind of a time frame of I'm going to look at houses for this amount of time and then I'm just going to pick one. Like if I can find something that makes me happy, I'm going to get it and move on. Um, trying to time the market. And this is a lot of times investors, um, you know, they want to buy when it, the market is at its lowest and then sell when it's at its highest. And everybody wants to jump on that bandwagon. You know, we all want to think that we're good real estate investors, but a lot of times what ends up happening is people who try to time the market end up missing the mark. Um, you either jumped on the bandwagon too late or you overpriced what you had when you, when you did get into the market. So be careful that you're not trying to time the market. You know, if this is a good time for you to buy a house, then let's go buy a house. Um, and you can't make lowball offers right now. Um, and I try to guide my people with that as well, that, you know, it is a seller's market. If you're needing closing cost assistance, things like that, then, you know, you're going to have to give them full price and you may have to come in above full price if we get into a multiple offer situation. So making low ball offers right now is probably not going to get you the house that you're looking for. Um, asking for far too much. And sometimes I've seen this happen as well, where, you know, they want the seller to fix every little thing. They want their closing costs paid. They want that home warranty paid. They want to negotiate $40,000 worth of repair. Like it's not going to work that way. You know, I mean, when you're selling a house and when somebody's trying to buy your house, we all need to work together to try to make it happen. Um, but as a buyer, especially again in a seller's market, you can't ask for the sun, the moon and the stars because that seller's going to say, you know what, I'll just sell it to the next guy who didn't need all that stuff, um, who was a cash buyer. So the last thing that buyers do to sabotage uh, their home purchase is they're not flexible. Um, again, when inventory's low, sometimes you have to, to do a little give and take. So, you know, if you're looking for a house in a particular elementary school zone, you may be waiting a while, or you may have to give up some of the other things about a house that you were looking for in order to get in that school zone. Um, so just keep that in mind. And these are just nine different things that I've kind of come across that buyers sometimes do um, that will sabotage their ability to buy a home. And when it is a seller's market, you know, you got to do everything you can to be as strong a buyer as you possibly can. So that's why we tell people, you know, get pre-approved, go ahead and give them your credit and income, let them verify all that so that when the time comes and you find the house that you want to buy, all you have to do is um, turn in the purchase contract and then you're waiting on, you know, the inspection, the appraisal and the title. You're a much stronger buyer that way. Thanks so much for watching with the Monday Morning Mojo. I hope your Monday is great as is the rest of your week. Try to stay dry and I look forward to seeing you next week.